Hello, welcome to a brand new episode of Gadget Nation. Ah, with me, Adam Carruthers, sorry. Just playing around with my Optimus Prime helmet and I have plenty in store for you today. Something from HTC, some speakers for your use at home and of course a brand new game and all the news that you could want packed into the show. This is Gadget Nation, let's start. Lenovo announces the latest smartphone in market, the Vibe X. Measures at 6.9mm and weighed at only 121 grams, it is really sleek and convenient for all moderate users. The screen is made with HD 5-inch 20x20 vision display and a scratch-resistant Corning Gorilla Glass 3 screen for extra impact protection. One thing that makes it more nifty is the two advanced cameras to capture stunning photos, videos and selfies. The front-facing camera offers 5 megapixels, the highest megapixels in the market today, together with wide-angle 84 degrees lens. Harman International Industries revealed JBL and Harman Kardon new products for 2014 here in Malaysia. Compromise high-quality music, up-to-date premium design and acoustic innovation, Harman launches several products range from top to bottom. This includes Onyx, Aura, Nova, Voyager, Pulse and Flip 2. Combining power and style, the Harman Kardon Onyx is the most stands out. With built-in Bluetooth, AirPlay and DLNA, Onyx simply connects all your gadgets. We've seen some great devices from HTC in the last year or two. I mean, the HTC One, we all know, for many people out there, was the phone of the year. What about some of the lower-end category phones? What about a dual SIM card phone from the guys at HTC? We have that in our hands. New phone from HTC, obviously, one of the uh, top industry leaders in terms of the quality of phones they're making. I mean, the HTC One in 2013, for many people, was the phone of the year, best bar none. Obviously, that's entirely subjective. Now, what I have here is not a high-end HTC device like the One, for example. It is the HTC Desire 600, and the price is a shade under 1,200 ringgit. So, obviously, when you're paying much less for a phone, don't expect anything which is incredibly high and don't expect me to compare this to the HTC One because it's really apples and oranges. Now, it's right here in my hands as you can see and just for a size comparison, this here is the iPhone 5. Excuse the picture there, it's not my phone but it just gives you an idea of what we're looking at. I mean, it is obviously smaller than what we've seen with the HTC One and I'd say I've kind of missed holding a smaller phone in my hand. I'm so used to large phones like the, the Note, for example. So it feels really, really cool right here. Now, in terms of build, it's nothing compared to the HTC One. So I'm just going to show you this. One thing, unlike recent HTC phones, you can remove the back piece like such and like such. Now, as I show you that, you may notice some interesting things about the phone. So let's break down exactly what makes this stand out. Firstly, the shape, it kind of reminds me of the HTC Windows phone devices in terms of how it is. I mean, it's slightly flatter, slightly sharper than what we've seen in the more recent Android devices from HTC. Now, it feels very nice in my hand, like such. I touched on how I'm missing having a smaller phone here, and it really does feel a little bit different. However, there's a couple of things I don't like. Now, this comes back to the price I'm paying for it, but you'll notice, though it might be hard to pick up on the camera, how the bezel here is silver. Now, it looks and it also feels cheap, on the, but at the price this is costing, you can't complain too much. Also, it's a plastic back, the one on which I popped off just now, so let me do it one more time. And, I mean, if you compare this to the quality which you find, the HTC One, it really, really is vastly different. One touch I do like, though, is having all of this here in red. I mean, it really looks nice and classy. It's like you're looking in the internal aspect of, you know, like a robot or something. Pretty cool. Now, in terms of how the layout is, very similar to the HTC One. At the bottom here is just two 
capacitive buttons. This HTC logo here does absolutely nothing. So it's pretty much back and home and that's really what we've come used to from HTC. Not that I mind too much, I've become rather used to it. Obviously the volume rocker is here on the side, just go up and down. It's very hidden, I mean there's no real marking, it just stands out a little bit on the silver aspect itself, or rather white part there. Apart from that, you've got a power button at the top, you've got your headphone jack, and obviously at the bottom we've got our USB port for charging. So it's very simple, very basic, Nothing to really stand out here. So let's take a look at some of the insides. Now one thing which I do like before I pop up in the back cover again is like this surrounding of the camera. It looks rather nice. I, I like that. It's a nice touch. This is an 8 megapixel camera by the way, but you'll be severely let down. I mean there's no HTC Zoe, doesn't use the ultra pixel camera technology that we've seen on the HTC One. It's a regular camera and there's a lot of noise, a lot of distortion. It's not great at all, just to warn you. Now let me pop open the back once more and discuss what is here exactly. Now the device only comes with 8 GB internal storage. Have no worries. Obviously it comes with a micro SD card slot, 64 GB upwards. So, you know, if you have a lot of stuff, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, we can see here though, there's a slot for two SIM cards. This is very interesting. That is the key aspect of this phone. If you are someone that travels overseas a lot, well, mainly to two countries, you can continue to run both lines on this device. What's awesome is you can also keep them both in. You can answer calls from both and really it makes it much, much, much more useful. You won't have to switch it off or switch it on and select which SIM card you want to boot up with. It will automatically be there. Also, you can surf 3G speeds. This is an LTE. It'll only work on one of the SIM cards. The other one will be operating on 2G. So if you're switching countries and you're on 3G on one network in one country, 3G on another, you might want to switch it around like that. Also, it's got the removable battery right here. As you can see, it is in red. Everything is in red here. And I have to say, it's a really nice touch. I mentioned that slightly earlier on. I really think this is the best part about it in terms of the scheme of colors, etc. The sea of red. So what I think about this overall, I mean, it's a snappy little device. It's a 1.2 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon processor. I mean, that's pretty speedy. It's got one GB of RAM as well. And apart from when I'm taking pictures and there's a bit of a shutter lag, everything else tends to run pretty smoothly. The battery life, well, it's packing 1,800 mAh. Well, that should get you about a day's use on, uh, if you're a moderate user, that is, I should stress. Obviously, that's entirely subjective on how often or how active you are on your phone, but it should do the job a roll. It comes with everything that you expect. There's no LTE, but there's obviously 3G, which I touched on, Bluetooth, uh, DLNA, everything like that, NFC as well, I should add. And it will certainly get the job done on a daily basis. Now, in terms of other dual SIM card phones out there, this is definitely a step up. It's by far the best which HTC has to offer from all of their phones. But if you compare it to all other dual SIM card phones out there, which are low end, I would say this is probably one of the top ranked ones. Albeit 1,299 ringgit, obviously. It's not going to get you the greatest, but it'll get you something that will do the job. Thank <laughs> you.